Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Floss Tube number 11. This is Jesse, and you've reached Miss Late Pages, and uh, thank you so much for coming. I know a bunch of you are new, and thank you so much for checking me out. All of those of you who are returning, thank you so much for sticking with me. It's good to see you every time I post a video. Uh, love interacting with you, and uh, and I'm so happy that I'm putting out stuff that you want to watch. So thank you so much. Um, I hope you're all well. I know that these are crazy times. Uh, this is the stay-at-home edition of Floss Tube yet again. I have been working from home since March 13th, um, and uh, it doesn't look like that's going to change anytime soon. I'm very thankful that I can work from home, but uh, even as much as I am a... Um, a stay-at-home kind of homebody introvert it's making me a little crazy um, I think it's the working from home that makes me a little crazy just because um, when you're not used to working from home for somebody else it feels very invasive to have your office brought into your home especially with all these zoom meetings and Microsoft team meetings and all. <laughs> I don't even know <laughs> So whatever your situation is right now, I hope you are well. I hope you're healthy. I hope that you're staying sane in whatever way that you can. Um, I have learned certainly, <clears throat> excuse me, I've learned certainly that uh, stitching is part of my mental health regimen um, and that my mental health suffers if I go too long without stitching. So um, I have decided to make it a much more uh, regimented kind of thing to, to get stitching into my life. I probably need to be stitching for at least 30 minutes or an hour every day um, just to keep myself sane because these have been trying times. And, um, and I say that as somebody who comes from admittedly um, a very blessed place. I am very lucky. My husband and I are very lucky. Um, but even for all of the advantages that we have, it it's been challenging so um, I can't even imagine what some of you might be going through so whatever you're doing to keep yourself you uh, to keep yourself safe and sane and and healthy uh, in these times um, you know if there's anything I can do to help you with that just let me know so with that let's get into some stitchy goodness so um, I realized last time that I completely fell off the wagon with my what am I listening to what am I listening to? Um, so um, I want to get back into that. Unfortunately, because I don't have a commute right now, I'm not really listening to a whole lot. So um, part of that, I think, um, in addition to making sure that I'm stitching every single day, I'm going to also try to listen to one of my audiobooks every single day. Turn off the TV for a little while, turn off the Hulu, turn off the Netflix, listen to something instead of trying to watch whatever random crap I'm watching these days. <laughs> I'm cleaning off the DVR. That's working really well. So. I have my Big Bang Theory mug right here. And uh, I realized, I'm just going to be real with y'all for a second. I realized as I was getting ready to film this that I was going to make a huge faux pas and wear the same shirt that I wore last time I filmed. And I was like, oh my gosh, I can't do that to my viewers. So uh, this is a shirt my friend gave me. I don't know if you can see. So it's a crazy bunny with all the craft things. Make all the things. Um, because my friend Susan knows me very, very, very well, so I am, I am sporting uh, my Christmas one of my Christmas presents from Susan this morning because I I can't make y'all see the same shirt a second time in a row. <laughs> These are the things I think about in quarantine. So, <laughs> so back to what I'm listening to. So. The last things I was listening to um, before we before I discussed it in Floss Tube, I was listening to <clears throat> excuse me um, some of the Patricia Cornwell books, the um, the K Scarpetta series. I had listened to I think the first book and maybe started the second book, and I had also picked up this um, audio book. Um, I can't remember the title of it because I didn't do that research before I got on Floss Tube. I will tell you about it next time because I may have finished it by the next time we talk. So, um, but it is a book by Joan Didion. It's a collection of some of her essays and publications from the 60s and 70s. Um, I learned about it through Will Wheaton, of all people. Surprise, surprise. <laughs> um, but I was looking at Goodreads. I was looking for something. It's funny. I was looking for something specifically to fill the... Um, School of Magical Stitches in Literature extra credit event for March, um, which I, I didn't finish it in time, so. But you needed, 
excuse me, I'm so sorry. Um, you needed a book that had the letters for Chernabog in the title. So C-H-E-R-N-A-B-O-G, Chernabog. <laughs> Can you imagine how difficult it is to find a book with those letters in the title? So I was I was uh, snooping through Goodreads and I follow Will Wheaton on Goodreads. Bleh. I follow Will Wheaton on Goodreads. <laughs> um, so I follow Will Wheaton on Good Goodreads and I was looking. I have it happened to pop up in his feed on my feed. However that stuff works. Um, <clears throat> that he was reading this book by Joan Didion, um, and now that I've talked about the title, I remember the title, it's called Slouching Towards Bethlehem. So, because that's such a unique title, I was like, that has a lot of letters. Let me see if I can find all the letters for Chernabog. Sure enough, Slouching Towards Bethlehem has all the letters for Chernabog. So I'm like, okay, Will Wheaton likes this book. It's got all the letters I need. I will try it out. Turns out there was an audio version. Um, I think Diane Keaton is the narrator, and it's really, gripping. Um, it's very sort of esoteric and ethereal and different. It's very kind of strange. Um, and I don't know if any of you are familiar with Joan Didion. I'd never read any of her stuff before this, but I might have to find some other stuff by her just because it's, she has a really interesting vision. She has a really interesting way of speaking and looking at things. And some of these are interviews, and so, but they're not traditional interviews. And some of these are sort of biopics. And, you know, there's just different kinds of things happening in these, um, in these essays that she's written. So it's really, really interesting. And I'm excited to get back to it. I've, got a, I've kind of gotten stuck in this one particular essay that is um, the titular essay. So it's it's slouching towards Bethlehem is what it's named. And <clears throat> and it's just, it's very strange because it's talking about sort of the, um, like the, the drug and free love kind of uh, atmosphere, sort of culture in in um, California, I forget where in California, San Francisco, San Domingo, somewhere. Um, it's talking about just that kind of thing that was going on in the 60s, but it's sort of written from the point of view of somebody who's experiencing that, and it's it's just, it's a trip. It's a trip. So I'm, I'm in the middle of that essay, so that's what I'm listening to. So um, I guess that will bring me to, let's talk about, I did actually touch my 24 hours of cross stitch calendar. Um, I have touched it since we last talked. I haven't done the, um, you can hear my cat playing with a bell in the background. Sorry about that. She is, Momo likes to play first thing in the morning. I don't know what her deal is. She's not like her mother. <laughs> um, so yeah, so I touched my, I touched my planner. Um, I didn't actually select out what I was going to do for the, um, words are failing me this morning for the acrostic. I didn't actually do that yet. Um, <clears throat> I may skip April too, um, partly because the words that I see, um, or the letters that I see for April's acrostic just aren't driving with me. It's a whole, it's like, um, sun and showers or sun and shade or something like that. There's too many S's. Um, I don't know. I'm, I'm just not jiving with it, so I may skip that, but I am trying to do the goal of like 24 minutes of cross stitch each day, uh, 24 hours of cross stitch in the month, and this month there is a 24 hours of cross stitch marathon weekend, so um, I want to say it's the weekend of April 24th, um, a couple weekends from now. I will be participating in that. I will be setting up a marathon plan. Um, I'm going to focus, I think, on a lot of my older whips and try to get either some finishes or at least lots and lots of stitches in on those. So I will be doing 24 hours of cross stitch. If I can get myself motivated, I might even do a couple of videos over the course of that weekend, um, just like play by plays. And, you know, this is my. This is my vlog of how 24 hours of cross stitching looks, so we'll see. <laughs> is that something you'd all be interested in? I don't know how many people will be blogging um, about 24 hours of cross stitch, but that's coming up in a couple of weeks. That is right about the time that I should be doing another floss tube, so um, you'll probably get a video one way or the other, whether you want one or not. <laughs> Um, the other thing is, and I think I talked about this last time, there's the Stay Home and Stitch, or Stay Home and Finish Your Whips SAL. 
uh, that is also being um, sponsored. I don't know how you, I, I don't know what you call these things when somebody develops a hashtag and says, I'm doing this SAL as a hashtag. <laughs> Genly started it. That's, <laughs> that's how we'll say it. So um, I have, uh, I do actually have a finish for that. Technically, it's not a stay home and finish your whip, whip because I just started it last week and then I finished it last week. Um, so it's a new start, but then it was a whip and then I finished it. So I guess it counts. I don't know. <laughs> I haven't actually finished any whips that I already had prior to <laughs> do this, but I'm working on it. So, and with that, let's talk about the whips. <clears throat> so you remember, I sort of waxed poetic over this guy last time. <clears throat> Excuse me, I'm sorry, I'm so congested in the morning. I probably shouldn't film these when I'm so congested. <clears throat> Something about talking makes me congested. So anyway, it doesn't look terribly much different. Um, my, uh, my minder is in the way. Let me just push pushing out of the way. Okay. So it doesn't look terribly much different. I'm not even sure if you can tell, and this is not gonna focus. There we go. So if you look closely, you can see that there actually are some beads on here now. So I've got oop, dyslexia. Okay. So there's some beads there. There's some beads here. I apologize for the state of my nails. Beads here. So I've got a few beads on here. There are many more beads to go. Um, I stopped though because um, the beading needle I have was making me insane and it was making me hate my life and I was not having a good time. So <laughs> I, I considered pushing through and just trying to get it done, but um, I have one of those really long um, beading needles that's actually meant more for um, for doing a different kind of beading work. Um, they're an open eye needle, so they're about three inches long and they kind of split apart in the middle so that you can put your thread through. And it's great for doing kumihimo beading um, and some other stuff like that because it's nice and long. You can put lots and lots of beads on it all at one time, but for cross stitch, it is murder. It is awful. I do not recommend. Do not recommend. So um, I need to get some new, um, I need to get some proper beading needles. I'm gonna look at some Mill Hill beading, beading needles for that. <clears throat> and once I get those, then I will finish this and then that will be an absolute finish. Um, so the thing that I started um, and then finished, so it's a whip, but not a whip for the stay home and finish your whips, um, <laughs> is, um, is a design by Michelle Bendy Stitchy, Michelle G of Bendy Stitchy Designs. Um, and I have to tell you, I'll tell you in a second, but I, I had some fangirl realness some fangirl realness oh my gosh so anyway um i've been watching michelle g bendy stitchy um for a couple of months now and she is fantastic i love her she is such a nice person such a wonderful human being um and she's fun to watch and she's really gotten me she's opened my eyes to a lot of different styles of stitching that i never would have looked at before um especially stitching on really high counts stitching over one on high counts and things like that so she's gotten me into a lot of more adventurous stuff um and so if you're not watching her on youtube you totally should be watching her um like i said she is michelle g um bendy stitchy is her um is her YouTube handle, I believe. I'll try to remember to link her down in the comments, not the comments, in the description, in the place where you link the things. Um, but yeah, so she did, um, as part of the Be Well and Stitch, <clears throat> she did this fantastic design. This is free, totally free, like all the other Be Well and Stitch um, designs. And you can find this on her Patreon page. I'll try to remember to give you a link there too. So she came up with this design, totally for free, available on her Patreon page. Um, whether or not you are a paid Patreon. It's on her Patreon page. And I fell in love with the design. I was like, oh my gosh. And I think it has to do, it has to do with this kind of bindi idea that's happening here. So we've got the hand and it looks like there's lots of, um, uh, if this were a real hand, it would be like henna tattoo. So it's very kind of Hindu-esque um, and that sort of thing. Very, to me, reads very peaceful, very calming, very like wholesome, healthy kind of situation. So I fell in love with that and I was like, oh, I really want to do that. But I didn't know what colors I would want to use. I didn't, 
I wasn't digging that particular color scheme just because those aren't my colors. Um, and then I remembered that I had seen this gorgeous floss pack on Hand Dyed by Rolanda. If you have not checked Hand Dyed by Rolanda, you must go check Hand Dyed. Like, do it now. Go now. Um, she has beautiful fabrics. I haven't gotten any of her fabrics yet, but I have bought so much of her cotton and her silk floss. Gorgeous. And so with the the advent of this pattern and the silk pack at the same time, I was like, this was meant to be. This is a thing that has to happen. And so, da -da -da. and so, um, and I had these beautiful, beautiful scraps, you may recall, not scraps, but grab bag fabrics from Kathy Davidson at Dying for Cross Stitch. And I was like, this is a tiny design. It's perfect for one of those pieces of fabric. And so, dun, da, da, da. here we go. I'm going to readjust the camera here. I need to get a self adjusting camera. So I'm holding it too far in front of the light, but be well in stitch. So, and I apologize. My my work computer is dinging in the background. I'm just making sure, making sure nothing uh, super important comes up. So anyway, um, so these are the, um, there were five actual flosses or silks in the pack from Hand Dye by Rolanda. This uses four of those, and I'll be showing you that silk pack later. But so this was a start, this was a finish. Um, it was my very first foray into over one stitching. I don't know how well you can see that. So over here, this COVID-19 part, I probably shouldn't have actually said the words, but that part right there um, is actually stitch over one. And the word itself is one over one and the 19 is actually two over one because I didn't really know what I was doing. But I left it because it took too much to stitch and I didn't want to unstitch it and all that sort of stuff. So I'm super proud of this. This um, has helped my mental health beyond, you don't even know. You don't even know. Um, and the, the extra special thing is when I posted on Instagram that I was going to do it, um, I of course hashtagged um, Michelle G and Bendy Stitchy Designs and Be Well, and I did all the hashtags. And next thing I know, Michelle's like, oh, those colors are fantastic. And I'm like, she commented on my Instagram, like directly on my Instagram. And then, and then just last night, just last night, um, she saw the finished piece. And she's like, I still can't get over those colors. And she put it in her Instagram story. I'm like, it was, it was just about as good as when Will Wheaton put me on his Instagram. So I'm like, ah, I'm such a dork. But, <laughs> but I really love her. She's a fantastic designer. She's a fantastic person. And so to have her see my work and, and recognize my work and enjoy it, um, that was, that was pretty fantastic. So, um, yeah, so that was a finish. That was fantastic. That was super awesome. Um, and just getting any kind of feedback from her at all was, uh, was pretty awesome. So, um, thank you so much, Michelle, Michelle G for, um, um, for seeing my post, for commenting on my post, for taking the time. I can imagine you get lots and lots of tags, and um, and so that was pretty special to me, so thanks. Um, let's see, what else? Um, after I finished that, I was um, I was inspired to continue working um, on cross stitch because I realized, like I said, um, that apparently stitching helps me stay sane. It helps me stay centered. Um, so it was really important to continue that on. And um, <clears throat> I had some of my friends had just gotten into the peppermint purple stitch along or were uh, just getting back into working on it. And so, excuse me, that ended up being the next thing that I decided to work on. I wasn't quite ready to dive into some of my other stitch alongs. That's what SAL stands for is stitch along. Um, I sometimes will call it a sal um, just to save time <laughs> for brevity. Um, <clears throat> sorry, touched my face. Um, anyway, so some of my friends had uh, just recently gotten gotten back into this or just started it, so I decided to get back into my sal. Um, and I've gotten through, we're on actually week 15 as of last Wednesday. Um, so this, this is a year of black work stitch along from Peppermint Purple. 
This is a free stitch along. I'm trying to, I'll have to, I keep having to adjust the camera, I'm sorry. Because I don't have one of those handy dandy autofocus cameras. This is not gonna, okay, anyway. You get the idea. So this is a free uh, stitch along from Peppermint Purple. There's a Facebook group. Uh, <clears throat> so you don't have to pay anything to do this. You just join the Facebook group and she drops um, a new block every week on Wednesdays. Um, so as you can see, each week is a different design, a different black work design. And black work, for those who aren't familiar, is, is basically a fancy backstitch. So instead of just your, your straight lines like here, so this is a straight up backstitch, just plain old backstitch, um, you do fancy designs and geometric patterns. So each week is a different, um, a different pattern. And for these weeks here, I just haven't gone through and done the, uh, the backstitching outline yet. I kind of wait till the end. You can see my, my backstitching thread is parked up here. So um, this is through week 11. So this is the most recent week that I have stitched. This is week number 11. Um, I still have um, 12, 13, 14, and 15. And then Wednesday, week 16 will be out. So my goal is to get caught up on this by Wednesday. Um, or at least to finish week 16 by the end of this week uh, before the next pattern drops. And then I'm gonna try to stay on this on a week to week basis because one block a week, if I stay on it, um, is pretty easy. These take anywhere between, um, I'd say 30 minutes and two hours, depending on the level of intricacy um, and my attentiveness to the task. I will say I love the way black work looks and there are times when I really really love doing black work. There are also times where I'm just like oh my gosh if this square does not get done I'm going to die. So <laughs> sometimes the black work is too much for me but um, this can be an incredibly calming activity even compared to regular cross stitching. So um, and it seems much more difficult and intricate than it really is. So if this looks at all interesting to you, I urge you to go check out Peppermint Purple's Facebook group for the Peppermint Purple Year of Black Work Stitch Along. So that's, um, that's another thing I've worked on since we talked last. Um, and I think, <clears throat> I want to say last time I actually showed this on Floss Tube, um, I think this, this last um, outlined square was the last week I had done. So since we've talked, I've actually done five weeks worth which I think is pretty impressive, but that's just me. <laughs> and then last but not least, um, because I got kind of bored with the black work, <laughs> I did those five weeks and I was like, oh my gosh, I need a break. So um, I decided there's a couple of new things. There's a bunch of new things I want to start, but um, for me, starting something new is I have to hear it calling. It has to call to me. It has to go, Jesse, Jesse, it's time. It's time. <laughs> That looked really creepy. I don't know how creepy that looks to y'all, but that looked creepy on my camera. Anyway, <laughs> I am alone in the house today. Can you tell? <laughs> wow. Okay. It's getting real, y'all. <laughs> anyway, so nothing was calling to me. Let's just put it that way. There's a couple of things that I do want to, there's a couple of more um, Be Well stitches that I want to do, but I, the magic wasn't happening. So I decided to pick up a really old or older um, whip. And those of you who have been watching since the beginning, you will probably recognize this. So this is, this is also a peppermint purple design. Um, and you can tell by the black work up here. So she is, she is pretty famous for her black work um, specifically. This is um, a Macintosh Rose black work stitch along. It was a free mini stitch along that was offered by Lakeside Needlecraft um, like last year sometime. I think summerish because um, I think it happened, I think I started this right before last year's stitch. So um, this is, I believe it's still available for free on the Lakeside Needlecraft website. So just go check them out. Um, like I said, this is another free black work pattern. It came out in six parts. Um, I believe it was six parts. At this point, obviously we're way past the, the stitch along. I'm just kind of doing it the way that, um, in the order and in the way that I want to do it. So um, the older bits 
are um, obviously these black work pieces up here. You may recognize those from the previous videos that I've shown this in. And then also this part of the rose and most of this part of the rose I had done previously. Um, these are, all of these flosses are from a shop called Yarn Player on Etsy. Um, she does these fantastic hand dyed yarns, or not yarns, um, cotton flosses. She primarily does pearl cotton um, for tatting. Um, I'm not sure if any of you are familiar with that, but it's a really, I have no, I have no idea how you do tatting, but it's a really interesting um, method of sort of weaving um, fibers together to make these really cool intricate shapes for jewelry and things like that. Um, you should totally check her out if that's something you're interested in. I think she right now doesn't have any fibers available. She does have patterns for her tatting though. So if that's something you're interested in. Um, regardless, she will be having fibers again. Um, she, she said that she will on her, on her Etsy page. So these are all from her. They're super fantastic. And, um, what was I going to say? Oh, so you may notice that there's a significant difference in the way this rose work looks as compared to this part or any of the other parts of the rose. And that's because I discovered a different way of laying down the stitches so that it gives it a much more um, gradient, like a smoother gradient effect, like an ombre kind of situation. So you can kind of tell in these flowers um, so the purple and teal here, I actually went horizontally back and forth and I actually stitched the entire row and, um, with one direction and stitched, you know, came back with the other direction. So you can kind of see that if you look really closely, um, that some of the under stitches are actually a slightly different color than the over stitches. And then with the red part here, I just did that vertically instead of horizontally. So you can clearly see very well-defined lines, which there's nothing wrong with that. Um, but I decided to try something different with these roses down here and I got super, super, I mean, this was like the biggest happy accident ever. Um, I had no idea what I was doing. I just decided to stitch diagonally instead of straight up and down or vertically or horizontally. And so with the diagonal stitches, and I did stitch one X at a time. So I would go over in one direction and then come back, finish that X, move on to the next X. And then I stitched diagonally like that as well. And that gave me this fantastic ombre. So I'm excited to see how it's gonna work with this colorway up here. Um, so that'll be my next step is to fill in this rose with that color. And then I've got a beautiful yarn player color that's got yellow and green and brown. And that'll be for the leaves down here. And then all the rest of the background will be rainbow black work. So, <clears throat> so. Um, yeah, so I'm excited about that. Um, I did, I learned another interesting thing. In addition to the ombre deal, um, I learned that the needle size does matter. <laughs> Especially for enjoyment of stitching, the needle size matters a lot. So um, I discovered when I started, or when I got my kit for the Animal Almanac Stitch Along by um, the Frosted Pumpkin Stitchery, um, they they included, I don't know why I'm showing you the needle, they included a pack of Bowen brand size 26 tapestry needles. And I have since discovered after working with those that those are my favorite freaking needles. They are fantastic. They're teeny tiny. They're great for working on like 32 count, 28 count, stuff like that. They're fantastic for things like this. They go through so much more smoothly. They're slightly, I think they're shorter than a lot of my needles, so you can work with them a little bit more easily. They're not small enough for beading, sadly, um, but they are a really nice small needle for a lot of things. So they get through the, when you want to do pin stitches on Ada, like this cloth, um, it's really great for getting in between those, those threads. Um, so yeah, Bowen size 26 needles, favorite needle ever. I'm actually going to get some size 28 needles um, when I also when I get my Mill Hill beading needles as well because um, I'm starting to work on some even smaller count or higher count fabrics um, like 36 and 40 and stuff like that and I know that even this teeny tiny little 26 size needle is not going to be small enough for that. So <clears throat> there we have the whips. That's all the whips that are fit to whip. So um, which is actually so much more than last time. If you recall, I think I worked on like one or two things last time we talked. So I'm super excited to have so much stuff to show you. So that was one finish. Um, speaking of finishes, 
Um, so I have one actual, actual finish. So, um, and I need to figure out how to FFO this. So um, for those of you new to cross stitching, FFO is fully finish off. So this is, a, this is an FO'd piece, it is a finished off piece. Now I need to FFO, fully finish it off. So I've got this piece that needs to be FFO'd and I've got, oh, I put it way over there. Okay, you can probably see, uh, vaguely you can see the, um, by far not the worst. You can see that test stitch in the background. Um, I need to fully finish both of those. So that'll be a thing to work on. Um, I just don't really know what kind of object I want it to be, so. I was more concerned with the stitching than I was with the finishing. So let's talk about purchases and Happy Mail and um, then we'll talk a little bit about some future plans and then I think we'll be done for the day because I don't have any yarny stuff to show you. I don't have any, I have ordered more yarn. Um, I've ordered some really exciting yarns, but I have not received them yet. Um, and I haven't received yet my new knit crate for this month, which I'm really excited about. Um, so I will tell you just briefly, um, for those of you not interested in yarn, close your ears for like a minute. <laughs> so um, a couple of nifty things that I have purchased that have not arrived yet. Um, I ordered, oh, I can't remember the name of the shop beautiful hand dyed rainbow speckly yarn gorgeous um, I want to say it's like threads by Nicole or something on Etsy uh, once I get that I will obviously show you and then I'll let you know exactly who it is so that you can go buy it if you want to um, she keeps popping up on my Instagram feed and so I've been stalking her Etsy shop for a while she's had a lot of colors that I found really interesting and then she did this rainbow colorway that's just oh, it's to die for so I finally um, I finally decided to go ahead and invest in uh, some of hers um, as you know last time I had bought from um, that chick that knits and um, the I haven't used those yet but they're they're cute um, they're just not as intense as I had expected so I'm curious to see if these new um, if this new yarn, wow, brain, uh, if this new yarn, um, by a different dyer is going to be more or less vibrant than her pictures suggest. So that'll be interesting. I also have ordered, um, and this one I'm really excited about. I've ordered the May, Oh, what does she call it? It's by Ruby and Roses Yarn. Uh, if you follow Rachel Ray Craft, you've probably heard of Ru Ruby and Roses. So I think she does this every month where she puts together a set of minis. So mini skeins of, of yarn um, that are hand dyed in um, a colorway that matches whatever theme of the month. She has a couple of different clubs going on right now. I ordered the May minis. Um, so the idea is that you get a, a new mini each, you can open a new mini each Saturday of the month. So I think you get the package all at once, um, but it won't be shipped out until the end of April. And then every Saturday in May, there's a new mini color that you can open. So we'll see if I have enough discipline to actually open just one every Saturday or if I'm just going to open them all when I get them. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, so I have that ordered. That's not scheduled to even be here until the end of April. I'm hoping that the, uh, the rainbow yarn that I ordered will be here sooner rather than later. I think she has like a two week turnaround time because she does die to order. Um, so we are about at the two week mark now. Um, and of course with everything going on in the world that may be delayed as well. She didn't have any indications in her shop that she was uh, running behind or anything like that. So hopefully that will be shipping soon um, and I will have that for you next time. Probably the Ruby and Roses I will have for you next time. I may do a separate nitty kind of short where I um, reveal those each Saturday. We'll see. So. Um, so that's the yarny stuff. That's all the yarny stuff that I have. Um, I haven't worked anymore on my, um, the shawl that I was working on. Um, I haven't just, it's been difficult to get myself to do the creative stuff that I need to do. Um, and that's unfortunate because those are the things that help keep me sane. So right now I'm focusing on making sure that I get the cross stitching in, um, you know, making sure that I take care of myself and, and that kind of stuff. So I'll get back to the day especially because I have all this yarn I have to use. <laughs> 
So, um, yeah, so Happy Mail. Happy Mail. I got a new piece of Happy Mail. This actually came as part of a, an order that I placed recently because um, I think I told you last time about um, a, a very kind woman who is also in um, Brandy's Bestitch Me group on Facebook. And she had won so many free patterns from Brandy that she decided to give back to the group. And I won one of the free patterns and the pattern just didn't show up and didn't show up and didn't show up. Well, she sent a second pattern and I guess what she did was she asked Brandy to just hold it until I placed an order. Um, you know, or until the next time I ordered. Um, and so when um, I ordered this gorgeous piece of fabric that I'll show you in a minute, I got this extra happy mail from uh, my very kind friend in the Bistitch Me group. So she had Brandy send this to me. It's a Halloween sampler. It's one of the pieces that I had really wanted um, that she gave away recently. So this is fantastic. And the funny thing to me is that the piece of fabric that I bought just happens to be like a really perfect fabric for this piece. <laughs> so um, that was that was my lovely piece of stitchy mail. Um, this is charted in Gentle Art um, and it has D DMC alternates as well. I'm gonna have to try Gentle Arts. I keep hearing things about, uh, wonderful things about Gentle Art threads. So I'm gonna have to try them soon. But yeah, it's super cute. I am probably gonna save this for closer to fall Halloween time. I love the fact that the colors are not what you would necessarily expect for a Halloween sampler. So the, the letters are actually kind of a, a navy blue, a dark blue and black. And then you do have some of the orange and purple and that kind of thing. But I love the fact that it's, it's a different kind of colorway for a Halloween sampler. So I'm super excited about that. We'll definitely be doing that later this year. The fabric that I purchased that initiated this Happy Mail is this gorgeous piece. This is a 40 count linen. <laughs> 40 count. And it looks almost tea dyed. It's a really gorgeous neutral kind of color. Sorry about the crackling. I haven't taken it out of the package yet. This is part of how I tell that I haven't shown a fabric on floss tube. So um, hopefully the color will be relatively true. But this is a really nice big piece too. This is 18 by 21. So on a piece of 40 count, especially if you're gonna do one over one on 40 count, that is a fantastically sized piece. I haven't looked to see if it's actually big enough for, um, for that Halloween pattern, but look how gorgeous that is really really nice um, I'm gonna have to probably take it out and uh, and iron it because otherwise that that big crease in the middle will stay there forever um, but I believe when I saw this um, I had actually gotten it to do um, <clears throat> I want to say that I got this for the animal stacks I wanted to do several animal stacks on this color um, but now I'm undecided because I think it would be really fantabulous for this Halloween sampler. I think that would go really, really well. So I'm not sure. We'll have to see. So this fabric may be repurchased. I oftentimes, when I buy these hand dyed fabrics from folks like um, Brandy with Be Stitch Me and Kathy Davidson of um, Dying for Cross Stitch, when I buy those kinds of fabric, I often don't have a specific project in mind. I just, I just see the ooh pretty. <laughs> um, so I decided to join, um, I, I think I've already mentioned, I'm in um, Mystic Hand Dyed Fabrics Fabric of the Month Club. And um, those fabrics have been pretty um, uniform. What is the word I'm looking for? So they've, so far this year it's been like single color almost solids because i'm getting those luganas that are not as vibrant um and so the colors are almost solid when i get them i've not been as happy with them as i would like to be um but i have seen some gorgeous stuff coming out of brandy from bestitch me so i decided to join her fabric of the month club as well um and uh, especially because she she has higher thread counts you can get um or fabric counts you can get 36 and 40 count fabrics from her um, that are not available from Mystic. 
so I decided to join her fabric of the month club and I joined she just happened to have the fabric that I was looking for so um, even though I signed up after April 1st she was able to join me in for April so I'll, I've already gotten April I have that right here and then I my first official one will be May but look at this fabric oh my gosh so this is a 36 count linen and this is such a gorgeous sky blue and I'm not sure if she named this it's April showers is what she's calling it it's oh look at that look so gorgeous yeah so this is fantastic I think this is also an 18 by 20 oh this is 18 by 27 so this is a super generous cut of fabric and it's got this gorgeous sort of cloudy effect happening that's fantastic i'm so happy with that i'm not sure what i'm going to use it for but this color is just fantastic so super happy that i have joined her uh, fabric of the month club very excited to see what may is going to have so fantastic I'll just slide that right back into the bag okay um so in addition to that i have purchased some frosted pumpkin stuff so it's been a while since i talked about frosted pumpkin um i am working on their theoretically i haven't worked on it in a while i am working on the um animal almanac 2020 stitch along um so i bought that already but they've started doing these um chinese zodiac and um year of um animal charts <laughs> i don't know what to call them um so um at the moment they have four year of charts um with the the chinese year um <clears throat> design i don't words um so i decided to go ahead and get all four charts and because um my printer is wonky and um I wanted to give them a little bit more business i actually ordered paper charts from them this time which i've never done before i usually get the pdf charts but then i print them out myself um, and so i decided to pay the extra buck i think um, to get the paper charts instead of the pdf charts this time so i got the year of the pig which is last year and i got year of the rat which is this year how cute is he so cute and then I got next year, which is the year of the ox. So, so cute. And I got, um, and this one has the, this one has extra bits in it. I also got the year of the tiger, which is 2022. So I'm covered for the next four years <laughs> for Chinese, Chinese years. I can't, I think I want to say that I'm the year of the monkey, um, but I can't recall right off the top of my head. So obviously I will keep buying them at least until I get to whatever year is representative of me. Um, and it's so cute. Their, um, their orders always come with this little card that has a, a free uh, pattern on the back, which is super cute. And this just says thank you jesse yeah so um just so you know if you order from frosted pumpkin stitchery if you order paper patterns there's a cat but um if you order paper patterns <laughs> um and you also order like threads or fabrics or anything like that um they're um say hi momo momo um they're printed patterns come from a different location than the rest of their supplies so you will get two separate packages i was a little concerned because i got a shipping notification for just the patterns and i was like but where's my fabric and stuff um and they're like oh don't worry you know we just sent it from two different places and we we ship them separately to save you time and blah blah, blah. so fantastic awesome so in addition to um those patterns i had to get some other stuff so um if you didn't know yet uh the frosted pumpkin stitchery is doing um a it's not a full year long they're doing yet another stitch along this year <clears throat> and i think it's i want to say it's eight months or something like that instead of the full 12. it starts in a couple of days starts on the 15th of april and it is the chinese zodiac stitch along 
So of course I had to, just like I did for the Animal Almanac, I sprung for the um, the floss pack that goes with the, the pattern for the Chinese Zodiac Stitch Along. And that is different than the Year of pattern. So this is a completely separate thing. Um, so the uh, Chinese Zodiac Stitch Along comes with all of these gorgeous flosses. Look at these colors. Like I can't get over the colors that Frosted Pumpkin Stitcher uses. So we've got some some red sparkly etoile. etoile. Um, we've got some treasure braid, which I've never used. Um, treasure braid. And then we've also got all these gorgeous colors. And in addition, I got the, uh, this is the Cashel kit. So it comes with the 28 count sort of parchmenty colored cashel. It's like vacuum sealed. I just broke the seal. Okay. So it's vacuum sealed. It's got that parchmenty color. I'm not going to take it completely. I didn't realize it was in a separate bag or I had just left it in the first bag. So, <clears throat> so I'm all set up for the Chinese Zodiac stitch along. I think I'm going to be smart this time and hoop it up. Um, or put it on a frame or something like that. I don't think I'm going to try to stitch this Cashel linen in hand. Um, it's been kind of a nightmare with <laughs> with the Animal Almanac. Um, but yeah, so um, so I'm all kitted up, all ready to go. Um, I actually need to get Rachel some of this treasure braid because I just now looking at this realized why she needed that PBO1 treasure braid. That's what she needs it for. <laughs> Rachel, I got you. <laughs> Um, in addition, um, I got some supplies for the year of stuff as well. So um, the year of picture, the year of charts call for some Weeks Dye Works and Classic Color Works. These reds and golds over here, over here. So um, I got two skeins each. I wasn't sure how much I needed, but I do have four patterns. So I got two skeins of each. And then I also got this super cute little, um, little needle minder. Look at him. The little paper lantern mouse. He's so cute. I figured I needed a specific, uh, I needed a needle minder specifically for the Chinese Zodiac. So I got the little paper lantern mouse. He's so cute. Yes. So I got those. And then I also got the called for uh, 28 Cashel linen in Chime. You can't tell. It's a really, um, it's a soft yellow. It just, it looks like nothing in the camera right now. But I got two pieces of that. I think that's gonna be enough to do all four patterns. Um, so that is the happy mail that I got from the Frosted Pumpkin Stitchery. Was so excited that they were still shipping. Was so excited to get the full kit for the uh, Chinese Zodiac um, Stitch Along. Super, super excited. So that'll be starting later this week. I'm not sure if I'm going to start right on top of it or not. We'll see. <laughs> I do have all the supplies. Um, I kind of need to get those flosses bobbinated and get them into some kind of um, um, possibly one of those bags plus stitchy things. I have to see if I have any left. I think I actually am using all of the ones that I have. I haven't finished any of those projects yet. So. Um, let's see some more purchases. So that's all of the fabrics and everything and I have bought um, some more flosses. So I think I mentioned before I do have a color and cotton um, subscription which um, this month I cannot even tell you how happy I am that I have a subscription because the colors are fantastic. Um, so I, I have I get the three pack of primitive colors. So I guess it'll be easier if I take these out. Um, the color, the bright colors, I think I might leave in the package just because they look so pretty and I don't want to mess them up, but the, the primitive colors. So I get a three pack of primitives, which I'm actually probably going to stop getting this week or this month. So these are this month's primitives. They're really pretty. I just realized that I'm not, I'm probably not going to use these colors. So <clears throat> we have Gloucester, Old Penny, and Pearl. So Gloucester, Old Penny, and Pearl. So they're still really gorgeous colors. Um, and we've got this sort of, um, this is a silver, a light blue, kind of silvery gray. Um, this middle one doesn't look to me like Old Pennies. It looks more like a donkey kind of gray. And then um, on the end here is a bluer gray. So. Um, they're perfectly beautiful 
primitive colors, um, but I'm, I don't tend to stitch primitive colors. I'll buy those primitive colors when I need them for a pattern. Most of the time I really like bright colors, bright, bright by bright colors. So <clears throat> the bright colors are much more to my taste. Um, and these are super fantastic this month. So look at these. Look, 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 look. And this first one actually looks like it's two or three different skeins, but it's actually one skein of purple that's variegated. It's beautiful. And then there's this, um, actually I will take them out of the package. I'll see if I can keep them all nice and neat like I did the others, but I probably can't. I don't know how they get them into the packages like this so neatly. So here we go. Gorgeous. Super fantastic. So this purple, um, and it's funny, so this this darker purple has a couple of different variega variegations, but this lighter purple actually has blue mixed in it too. So the blue that you see here is actually part of this purple, this lavender skein, and then there's a separate blue as well. So this darkest purple is Purple Rain, which I'm gonna have to buy all the Purple Rain ever because that is gorgeous. Blue Hydrangea is this pale lavendery kind of color with the blue mixed in. Uh, Limeade is this blue in the center that is kind of a bluish green. Oops, I've dropped them. I've dropped it. Sad. Okay. <laughs> I knew I was going to do that. Um, so this one is Limeade. It's got a lot more green in it than you can see. And then we've got Avocado, which is this Avocado Green, interestingly enough. And then this bright yellow is Sunflower. Gorgeous. Super gorgeous. So super happy with these. Um, super, super excited. So what I think what I might do for next month is actually um, drop the primitive colors all together and just get more bright colors um, because these bright colors are super awesome. Super, super awesome. So <clears throat> very happy with my color and cottons, uh, color and cotton floss of the month club. Super, super happy. As you can tell by the 15 million times I've said super. <laughs> um, and I mentioned earlier I had made a purchase with um, Hand Dyed by Rolanda. So this is the silk pack that I purchased and then used for that um, Michelle Bendy Stitchy um, Be Well pattern. So as you can see, it's got five colors. I don't know that, um, that Rolanda actually names her colors. This is an exclusive, it's a limited edition pack um, and it's got five eight yard <clears throat> eight yard silks in it um, that are beautiful and gorgeous. So the one closest to my fingers is sort of a teal color. We have a dark blue, like a, or I'm sorry, a dark purple, like a royal purple, this um, sort of dark avocado green, um, and this gorgeous gold that I think I'm gonna use on another pattern um, because I have, in addition to this pack, this is a brand new pack that I have not opened. Um, I bought two packs of this and used just a little bit um, of each of four of those colors for that one pattern. So I still have a ton that I have bobbinated and then I also have this whole pack. So I'm super excited. I haven't used this dark blue for anything yet. I'm not sure, oops. I'm not sure what I will use this dark blue for, but I love, 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 love. Oh. The silks are so soft, so gorgeous. And then in addition, um, because Rolanda offers free shipping on orders over $35, so of course I have to make it $35. <laughs> um, I also bought a variety of other beautiful cottons that she has dyed. So, awesome. Yep, so that is, that is all the, oh. So that's all the new purchases. That's uh, that's everything that I've purchased since we last talked um, as far as actual supplies. Um, I did actually make a new purchase that I'm super excited about to help organize some of that stuff um, because I have so many gorgeous hand-dyed um, fibers. I wanted to store them in a way where I could see them because part of the reason I purchased them is because they're gorgeous and I want to see them all the time. So I started investigating acrylic makeup drawers and I found this one on Amazon that I think is just about perfect. Now you're not going to be able to see, it doesn't display terribly well just like it is, 
um, but it is completely clear. And um, this one I think is, I want to say it's like six or seven inches deep and it's um, maybe 11 or 13 inches wide. Each drawer is like two inches tall. So it's just the right um, size and shape for storing lots and lots of flosses. Can you see that? So this is where I have some of my like miscellaneous, so this is where I have my silk flosses, um, some of my um, smaller skeins. Um, there's some thread works in there, some hand dye by Rolanda. You can see some, uh, some Kathy floss too. Um, as some of us um, lovers of uh, dyeing for cross stitch, we call them Kathy fabrics and Kathy flosses. <laughs> We love Kathy. <laughs> and then in these other drawers, I have my beautiful, beautiful Dying for Cross Stitch by Kathy Davidson um, hand dyed cotton fibers, these big 50 yard hanks that are fantastic. Um, and this is, um, this is just, I thought, a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful way to be able to store these because you can actually see the colors. Um, <clears throat> And the, the whole display is bright and colorful, which I love. Um, and then I can easily see what colors I have, what colors I might want to use. Because if you're like me, you have to see it in order to get your mind to sort of work around, okay, well, if I have this color fabric and I have that color floss, I can use them in this pattern. Or I have this pattern, what colors do I want to use with it? So that's how I not only display it in a way that makes me happy because I can see all the colors, um, but I can make it um, easier to um, to pick things out and use them. So buying them is part of the, the fun, but using them is another part of the whole process. Um, so I figure I can maybe use things a little bit more easily if I do that. I did almost forget one more thing. So <clears throat> I have been eyeing there's this one particular artist that I love, um, and I've talked to you about her before, Medusa the doll maker. I believe she lives in Spain. At least that's what her Etsy page says. So um, I have been eyeing this one particular um, giant cross stitch for a long, long time called Gamer. Uh, Gamer Nouveau actually is the title of the cross stitch. Um, and there's a shop on Etsy called Gecko Rouge, um, or Rogue, Gecko Rogue Rouge. I think it's R-O-U-G-E, so that would be Rouge, right? Anyway, Gecko something. <laughs> so they um, they have um, official license to sell some, uh, some of her artwork as cross-stitch kits, um, and I have been looking at Gamer Nouveau for ages and ages and ages, like before even I got wild about Stiach and really got into cross-stitching. Um, and I've been looking at purchasing it from gecko rouge for ages and ages and ages well i finally decided to go ahead and do that before i did that i decided uh, before i was willing to to shell out the money um, because it's it's an expensive kit um, i got a couple of needle minders from them so gecko rouge is actually based in the uk um, but uh, medusa the doll maker is based in spain so anyway so i got a couple of needle minders from them eh, okay you can kind of see that. Let me see if I can do the focus. There we go. So this is a part of what Gamer Nouveau looks like. This is sort of the central piece of the image. And this is a spiffy needle minder. So it's it's like a button. Um, and then the back piece is plastic with a magnet in it. So it's... Um, so it's nice and flat on both sides. I haven't seen needle minders like this before, so that's kind of cool. So they've got a button kind of situation, so you get the art on the front, um, and then you've got these plastic pieces on the back, which is kind of cool. Um, in addition to that, I got this piece called Bohemia. And I think I talked about Bohemia before. Sorry, let me, there we go. Um, so Bohemia showed up on Royal Diamond Paintings website a while back, but they had not attributed the image to Medusa Dollmaker, so I questioned them, and they did not respond to me. So I let Medusa know that <laughs> that her artwork was out there, and that perhaps she was uh, she it was being sold without her permission. Um, but this this is the image that showed up. Oh, I don't know why I'm putting it back up there because I just readjusted the camera. Anyway, so same kind of needle minder with the 
the plastic and everything. So I got these two needle minders. I'm super excited. And I'm totally going to use the Gamer Nouveau needle minder on the Gamer Nouveau kit that I have purchased. Um, I did, instead of going through um, Gecko Rouge's Etsy page, um, I decided to go, I, I discovered that they have their own separate website that they sell from as well as their Etsy page. So <clears throat> for those of you interested in purchasing from companies that are outside the U.S., if you live in the U.S. and you want to purchase something from the U.K. or Europe or something like that, I urge you to check and see if they have a separate website because you will ultimately save everybody money um, because they will not have to pay Etsy fees for the purchase. Um, they may have to pay whatever service they use to collect payments, but that's pretty standard. They won't have to pay the additional fees of listing and um, and Etsy's commission and all that sort of stuff. Plus, because they don't have to pay those fees, oftentimes you get to pay less as well as the, as the consumer. So I went to their website and I easily paid $30 less, maybe $50 less than I would have if I had gone through Etsy. Um, and part of that is because when they ship directly from their website, the shipping is less expensive. Um, additionally, the kit overall was less expensive than um, they have it listed on Etsy. So um, that is definitely, it's a tip from me to you. So I went to their website. I purchased, finally purchased Gamer Nouveau. It comes with 25 count magic grid um, even weave fabric and all of the flosses that I will need. And I believe it's something like a 16 by 20. I want to say it's a 16 by 20 finished image. So it's massive. It's like a heaven and earth design. It's, it's huge. Um, but I have been looking at it forever and I'm super, super excited. So that's coming to me someday. <laughs> um, I had no illusions when I ordered it that it was going to be anytime soon. Um, they did say on their website that um, that they're filling orders as quickly as possible. Um, usually when you order a kit like this, it takes a while anyway because they do, they don't just send you um, like full skeins of DMC. They will usually measure out how much floss you need of each color. Um, they usually will, will separate it out and sort it on a card for you. You get pre-cut um, strands and uh, and you know they put it on the card and sort it for you and all that sort of stuff. All that takes time. So generally speaking, I think you can expect to wait anywhere between one and three weeks just for, for even in, in the States, for a company under normal circumstances to put together a kit like this. Um, but with everything else going on, they are running behind. Plus it's got to actually get from the UK to the US and that could take a couple weeks on its own. So hopefully in May, <laughs> Hopefully by my birthday, um, I will get my Gamer Nouveau kit and I'm super excited about that. So um, this has gone on a lot longer than I expected. So let me just quickly hit up some uh, what's coming kind of stuff um, and then I will let you go. So anyway, uh, what's coming up? So um, I do hope to finish, I don't know if I'll finish, finish um, that Macintosh Rose SAL. Um, in the next couple of weeks, but I am gonna uh, I'm gonna try to, to catch up on that. I'm gonna try to catch up on um, the peppermint purple black work SAL. Um, as far as new stuff that, that's coming up, I do want to do at least one of the animal stacks patterns sometime soon. Um, that's definitely on my radar. I also have that gorgeous ink circles Christmas um, quartet if you want to call it that, um, the Christmas flowers, um, squares. I want to do those sometime soon. There's a Florida Lee pattern that I want to do for some friends for Christmas. And what else? Oh, obviously the Chinese Zodiac SAL. So, um, there's a lot of stuff on the horizon. Um, mania is coming up. Um, I just, I didn't know about it at all until uh, my friend Rachel Raycraft posted or talked about it in her recent floss tube, excuse me, hiccups. Um, I didn't know anything about it, but it sounds like it's a lot like March Madness, um, the stitchy version of March Madness. Um, and the idea is that you would start a new project every day in May. Um, for me, that's, that's too much. Um, I, I can't imagine I, I struggle to keep in my head or keep straight all of the whips that I currently have and I have less than 10 or maybe right at 10 at the moment. Um, I struggle with those. I don't want to add 31 more. 
Um, so I may do a much revised version of Mania where maybe I start a new project every week instead of every day. Um, so maybe four to five new projects in May, <clears throat> just because there's a lot of stuff I do want to get started. Um, and um, yeah, so I don't mind having a bunch of whips, but I don't think I need 31 plus the whips that I already have. I think that's way too much for me. Not unless I can somehow afford to buy 31 more project bags. <laughs> in the next, or not 31 more, but I'd have to probably buy close to 40 project bags just to keep everything straight or make 40 project bags. And who's got time for that? Even even with all of this stay at homeness, I don't have time to make 40 project bags. So anyway, yeah, it just doesn't, it's not realistic for me. Um, so yeah, if you all want to participate in Mania, then absolutely do whatever your little heart desires. Um, you know, I might find some itty bitty patterns or something like that that I can finish in like a day or a week or something like that and do that kind of stuff. But um, just the whole, the idea of starting 31 new projects is just mind blowing to me. So power to you, whoever wants to do that. Um, but, uh, but that will not be me. I don't, I don't see myself doing 31 projects in May. <laughs> Um, as far as videos and stuff go, um, you know, hopefully I'll have one at least for you in the next two weeks. Um, I am planning on doing some more of those, um, sort of, what do you call them? Progress videos, um, time-lapse. That's, that's the word I was looking for. I do plan on doing some more of those. I have, uh, several more projects that I have tons and tons of photos of. Um, I'll probably also do a quick one for the, um, Be Well and Stitch by Michelle G. Bendy Stitchy. Um, I have several pictures, but that's going to be a super short one because, I mean, it only took me three days to stitch that. So, um, so yeah, not, not a lot of, um, not a lot of pictures in that one. I might combine that with some other small projects that I've done, um, but I definitely want to get more of those out to you. I know that they're super quick, but I think they're kind of fun. Um, I like seeing projects in progress. I like seeing the, the progress that projects make um, and how they go from nothing to being completely finished. So if that's something that you like as well, I will have more of those in the future. So I think that's it for me. Um, that was a lot more than I expected, though I may cut little bits out. We'll see. I might just leave it like it is because because <laughs> who's got time for that? <laughs> we shall see. Anyway, uh, whatever you are doing to stay safe and healthy and sane, um, I hope that it is working for you and I hope you're having the best time that you can have uh, considering what's going on in the world today. Stay safe, stay well, uh, keep stitching. Love you all. Have a good one.